This pattern was called Double Windmill by Old Chelsea Station Needle Craft Service, a mail order company begun in 1933. If you ordered a pattern, it probably cost you 10 cents, and it arrived in an envelope like this, sent for just two cents. The company is still in business today, although most of their quilt patterns are no longer offered. I need to decide how to finish my quilt, and I have some great examples to help me. This is Ico Rogers' queen-size quilt with the seven-inch blocks. It's just beautiful in these reproduction fabrics, and they're all of similar value in yellows, pinks, blues, and peaches. Well, she needed 108 blocks for the center of her quilt, but only needed 50, 50 blocks for the borders. So what to do with the 58 extra blocks? So Ico took the extra blocks and made a second border of blocks, as opposed to this one, which only has one border around it. Well, this quilt looks huge, but it looks great on her queen size bed, and her husband loves it. Well, are you expecting twins these days? Now, don't have twins just for a quilt, but you could get two quilts for the price of one. Loretta Smith took her two sets of blocks and turned them into her girl boy quilts. And then she bordered them with fabric strips and actually used the opposite block out here in the corners. But I think I'll wait for grandchildren. Or if you would like, you could just make a border out of half blocks. Like the border on this small block wall hanging, there's nine blocks in the center and there's 18 half blocks around the outside edge. So let's give the finishing a whirl. Now is the time to decide which stack to use for the center of the block and which stack to use for the borders. Now obviously this would be a mainly blue center or this one, a mainly yellow center. So I decided I wanted to have a blue quilt. Well, since I'm doing a lap robe, you need to have a total of 24 blocks for the inside of the quilt. And it divides out so that it's four across and six down. You need to take just a large floor area or a table area. So just place each one of the blocks in order. And oh, let me warn you, if you're doing a scrappy quilt, make sure you have all of the blocks separated out into their right pile. One won't turn quite right. It won't spin with the rest. Okay, so you see how the pattern's starting to develop just with these nine blocks. I'll just lay this many out. Now, to sew the top together, I always do top to bottom order. Take the middle row and flip it onto the first block. And then once you have it flipped, carefully stack it from top to bottom so that the top block is still on the top. And then you can repeat it with each one of the next vertical rows. Stack them up top to bottom. Just set that aside and let it rest. Now the blocks lock into place just like the pieces in the other in the blocks themselves. So when you pick this up, this is going to roll right in. This matches right here. Seams are going in opposite directions. This matches right here. Locking seams and the same right down in the corner. Now I didn't do any squaring up on these blocks, and ooh, it is truly amazing how they all fit together. Keep that same quarter inch seam. Feel them. Make sure you can match them up and you can pull them a little bit. Hold them flat with the stiletto if you need to. And just continuously, so once the one pair is done, pick up the second pair. You don't need to cut your threads. Just slip it right through and continuously sew top to bottom in the first two rows. And I'm just gonna stop right here, cut it, and show you how you go on. Without clipping your threads, pull it back up to the top, or the threads in between. Pull it back up to the top, open the top two blocks, check, 
Make sure they look right. Make sure you've got a good match along there. Take your third stack, and I usually like to put it right here and near the arm of my sewing machine and just flip right into the block and then just continuously sew all of the vertical rows. And once the vertical rows are sewn, you just go back and do the opposite direction. Let me get that started. Well, it is amazing how fast I can sew because I've got all 24 blocks together, four by six, and then just press the seams flat on the back side. Lays really great. The next piece is the framing border. And gosh, usually you can just decide what measurement to make your borders. This time, the framing border has to be the exact same size as one quarter of your block. This is one quarter of the block. Measure it, find out what it is. This one is four inches square, so the framing border needs to be a four inch strip in the background the whole way around. So go ahead and add it on two sides, fold it out, trim it, and then add framing border to top and bottom. <laughs> then the border from the second stack of blocks is the yellow. You need to have four strips with seven blocks in each strip. Just sew those together, press the seams in one direction, and then just as you added the framing blocks to the side, add the border blocks to the sides, start them clear up there, and then this piece is going to go right out to the outside edge, completing that. So once you have that whole top put together, this is what the corner is going to look like. You've got all the blocks sewn together, the border, and then this one is finished off with the blue binding. It is beautiful. Well, I thought I'd take the time to show you how to set together the large block quilt, and I'll do some machine quilting on that one for you. The blocks for the large block wall hanging are made exactly the same way, just the measurements are different. So let's go over them. You start out with three and a half inch strips, a three and a half inch background, three and a half inch dark. And then on the opposite side, they're the same measurement with a medium and a background. You just piece them together, press that seam to the dark side, and then place those two sets of strips right sides together, putting dark against background. And then Measure it so that you have a square, and this one is actually six and a half inches square. Cut it with your 12 and a half inch square up ruler, and once you have squares cut, draw a diagonal line and ooh, be consistent. And then you sew a quarter inch on both sides of the diagonal line. I mean, sit in assembly line, so go right down a row of four of them, turn around, come back the other way. Now it's really fun whenever you cut the block in half and open it up, it's like Christmas magic. Because on this half of the block, you get all oh, the beautiful holly berries and leaves with the pink right here. Close it up, second half, more Christmas magic. Because this time, you're gonna have the small green, the larger bit of pink. So with four of these pieces, you just take them, working off that center point, and you create a small pinwheel right in the very center. Beautiful. Second block right here, turn it around with that small pinwheel in the center. This one is mainly pink. Well then with four of each of these blocks, sew them together and what a great looking quilt you get. I use the pink blocks right in the very center, four of them in the center, and then the alternate, the four greens in the corners. Now, whenever you cut your borders for this one, remember I told you on the small block, you have to measure a quarter block and cut the borders exactly that same width so the whole quilt goes together. Well, cut your borders that same width and then go ahead and sew them together. You're going to do four sets of borders and cut all four exactly the same size as the center of the quilt. Well, two of them will go on opposite sides. And then on the two remaining borders, attach your blocks to the borders 
and then put the whole thing onto your quilt top. Oh, gosh, this is like quilt in a couple of minutes, isn't it? Well, take your whole top. You need to do layering. Start with your backing fabric. Place it so that it's right side down. Then comes your batting, and I do like to use cotton batting. Oh, it's thin, so you can get your walking foot through it easily. And then your quilt top right side up. Now, you really do need to clamp this in place, and I prefer to use these basting clamps, but you do need to have a table that is just a half inch thick, or else they won't wrap around. Gosh, you know, if you have arthritis, that is pretty easy to do. Now, before we do pinning, actually, I jumped the gun, but you really should do your marking of your lines before you put pins in. Now, I'm going to go back and just stitch in the ditch on these lines. It's like a natural line. But to continue right through the background, if you take a 6 by 24 inch ruler and just line it up with that seam, and to line it up in the opposite side, take a marker called a hair marker. Just bear down hard, and you can just put this great crease in there to follow. Let's just move it over here too because it's so nice you only have to mark in the background areas. Okay, and then finally you can do your safety pinning. I use one inch safety pins and a pinning tool and you just take your pin, take it down, actually scratch the table with it, bring it back up and catch it right in the groove of the pinning tool and close your pin. And just pin as long as you can put your hand down and feel pins you have enough pins. So get your whole quilt top pinned. Let's move some stuff away here. Pull your clamps out. Now, especially if it is a really big quilt, you want to make this manageable, something that you can fit through the arm of your sewing machine. So roll on the diagonal, because we're going to do all that diagonal stitch in the ditch. And then use some um, Clamps like this, just wrap it around there. Ooh, it's really helpful if you have a huge quilt because there's no way you can manage this whole thing. Okay, ramp, clamp that whole roll up. And let's try some stitch in the ditch. Okay, I put my walking foot on already. And actually, when you stitch this, you could go ahead and use regular thread or you might want to use just some invisible thread. Well, if I put invisible thread on, you sure aren't going to see what I'm doing. So I just left my thread on for you. Do change your stitch length. Oh, I've been on 2.0. Let's get up there. About 3.5. Nice long stitch. And just work with your quilt top. Make sure I don't have any of my blocks underneath. Gosh, you know, one time I sewed my tablecloth right into my quilt. Okay, so let's just get this right on the end and drop your presser foot and just stitch in the ditch, needle down. Now, when you machine quilt, hold your hands in this shape. You actually make this um, V shape with your fingers. We're going to be pulling the seams open so that you can go right in that ditch. And don't do like I did. Don't put your knee, uh, pins near where you're going to machine quilt. Those are just way too close. Okay, so just go on the diagonal from one corner to the next, and then you can go ahead, lay it out, unroll it, roll it again and do another diagonal. And you're just going to completely stitch on all of these diagonal lines and you'll have it completely quilted. Now, if you have a really big quilt to manage, this one is just fitting on my lap nicely. If you have a really big quilt, you might want to just put it over your shoulder and stitch along like that. I'll never get all this stitching done while you're watching. You know, I have several other projects to show you made from the double pinwheel block. Waste not, want not, and quilters do not waste. Well, four patches make a darling quilt. And these are the four patches that are made from the excess fabric at the end of every strip on the small blocks. I made 28 blocks for my laugh robe, so I have 28 four patches. We'll divide that by four, and gosh, I can go ahead and put 
seven four patch in four different rows. It makes a great looking quilt and it's just all from leftovers. And then divide it up with some stripe going down in between each one of the rows. It's beautiful. Well, I know you think that I get rid of all that fabric I throw over my shoulder, don't you? Well, if you only knew, measurements are easy to remember on this quilt. Just start out with your four patch right here. It's just those two sets of strips that are right sides together. Just seam right down along there. Open that up. Got that four patch. You need to have two squares. That's all you have to remember, two size squares. For every row, you need to have two squares that are three and three-fourths inches square. And then you just take and cut those two squares on one diagonal. Okay, that's three and three-fourths. The second size you need is a seven-inch square. Now, for every two patches, you have to have one seven-inch square, and you're literally going to cut it into fourths on both diagonals. Oh, let me turn that around here. Kind of came apart. It would be best <laughs> if it didn't fall apart. Keep it close together. Because when you cut it like this, then your bias is on the inside edge. Now, to make the end caps, we'll just call them the end caps, take your uh, four patch like this, and you're going to take one of your squares. This is like a quarter square. It'll go right there like that. And then the two half squares are going to go on each end just like that. So let me just see if I can go ahead and sew one for you. Put all those pieces right on top. This large triangle is going to get flipped right sides together to it. And it's best if you sew it on the bottom because it is a bias. And if you keep it on the bottom, then it's not going to stretch for you. So just line it up so that it's square at the top. You've got this tip hanging out right in the bottom. In fact, you've got tips on both sides, but that's okay. Let those just hang out there. Okay, hold on to this uh, quarter inch seam. Line that up along there. And then take this piece. Now that it's stitched, you want the seam to go towards the triangle. So just op it, open it, and you can just finger press it or go right to the iron. Okay, that's the one piece. Now you need to have another piece cut from that three and three-fourths inch square that's going to go right there. When you flip it right sides together, you're going to make sure that you've got equal tips on both sides. You want to just center that right on there. And if you'd like to do this, you can even take your triangle, fold it in half, find your center point, match it up to your four patch, and then open it. Now, whenever I sew this little bit right here, hanging out, ooh, it does get to me. So if you want to just even that off, cut that off, get rid of that, then sew this next piece right on. Got equal tips, both sides hanging out. Stitch it right along there. You know what's so much fun is that you can just take all of these bits and pieces and scraps, finish your double pinwheel first, and just take whatever you have left and sew it together into your little four patch quilt. Okay, open this out, seams towards the triangle, and you just have one more for the end cap that's going to go right here like this. Flip it right sides together to it. Find the center one more time. Let's flip it over and just sew it this way. Get rid of those tips hanging off. Just cut that off on the end and sew it along there. Now before I sew, sew this into the next piece, I think I'll just give it one good pressing. Make sure it's nice and flat. Cut this off. Just open it so that all of the seams are going away from the four patch. Now we're going to make two exactly like this one, and I'll show you how it all fits together. This one here, let's put this right at the bottom of the row. Now you need to take those um, other pieces, sew them to both sides of the four patch like this and straighten off those edges if you would like. And once you take those and make a whole series of them, see how they just line up like this? And we can just cap that whole top off 
just by placing that, whoops, should have turned that around. Now I've got two blues right together. Mm, we could do that if we want. We'll just turn this one around, make it match. Okay, so then you can just go back and sew each one of your rows together. Once you have all your rows sewn together, you have a long piece that looks like this. Be sure and take your, your ruler, line up the quarter inch line right on the corner of your block. And before you start putting your stripe on, square that edge off. Got that quarter inch seam right along there. Now you can just sew as many four patches as you want, put them all together, have another little quilt that's just so much fun. Just things hanging around, maybe on my sewing room floor. But it has the four patch, the stripes, just a border around the outside edge, a binding. Gosh, you could give this as a gift and it would be a great present received. Three. I'm going on the Orient Express and I'm taking my bag with me because I know my sewing machine's going to fit in this bag. What a great bag. Just out of scrap pinwheel blocks. Oh, it's easy to do. It's got a side here with a little button. The front and the back, they're the same. Side here, handles going up in ultra suede. Oh, and look at the bottom. Ultra suede bottom and to finish it off, a zipper right across the top, easy to do. Now, it's a lot of fun to make them from scrap pieces, but what if you had blocks given to you, all finished by your sister? Oh, Patty loves Oriental fabrics, and so she gave me these pieces. What fun to work with. You need to have, for one side, six whole blocks, all sewn together, and then three half blocks. I took and sewed these together, made two of them just like this for the front and the back, put it on some batting, and then just machine quilted through all thicknesses. Well, this is the front and the back. The side panels come from two finished blocks and a half block up at the top. Got them machine quilted just on the batting as well. And then I need one more piece for the bottom. It's seven inches by 21 inches. Ultra suede, it's great. Let's do the handle. Now to do the handle, you need to have a piece that is four inches by 44 inches, long piece. Take the two ends, fold them in towards the middle, and then fold them one more time. So you have this narrow handle. You could do this out of corduroy as well. And then I just went and edge stitched the whole way along both sides of the strip. And then I centered it on my bag, really just followed those seam lines, did another edge stitch up straight across here and back down. I did it on both sides just so I could create that handle. Well, I'm going to take all of these four pieces and just sew them into this great big long strip. I'll do a front, I'll do a side, then the back, another side, and then sew them in a whole circle and insert that bottom right in, right in there. So it looks like the lining piece. I already did that one and it looks really strange. It's a great big box. Here's the bottom all set in. Here's the sides, front and back. Well, I'm going to go ahead, sew these pieces all together and I'll show you how to finish it. I turned my patchwork into a box and just tucked it into my lining with wrong sides together. So when you look at it, you see the right side of the lining here the right side of the patchwork here. Next, I just squeeze those layers together and I did a zigzag stitch the whole way around the top, sewing those two layers together and then pinched the end and sewed in four inches. I did that on both sides. Now, all I have to do is just turn this bag right side out. Ooh, this is definitely going on the Orient Express. I love all of this oriental patchwork here. Okay, so now you have the end sewn like this. Just poke them out on both sides and then so you can create that triangle for the button. Just take this end, fold it down like this, poke out that corner right there and just sew a button right on the end. That'll be a great decorative touch and all that is left is to take this 22 inch zipper and just place it 
behind this folded edge. Fold back the top edge a half inch on both sides and all you need to do is just sew along there Ooh, and make sure the teeth are still exposed on the zipper. Be a wonderful bag. So don't bag this idea. Spin right into the double pinwheel quilt.